Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at five or more hidden gems inside Adobe Muse CC. These are at least five things that I hear from uh, customers and users all the time that they either don't know how to do, don't know where it is, don't know about completely, and they want to know more about Adobe Muse. So I think I pick my five favorite or the ones I hear about the most. So the first one is actually introducing you to the new library panel, because again, this is one of those hidden things people often overlook um, because it wasn't there from day one with Muse, but let's take a look. So the library panel is fairly new. It was actually added in November, 2013. And there's two aspects of the library panel. First of all, you can create your own library items. So I've got a Terry White folder of objects that I can use on my site at any given time, which we're going to in just a moment. But the more important or fun thing is that we have the Adobe Muse Exchange. So this will be activated if you don't have anything else selected or highlighted. So for example, if I go here and click on bird, then I'm gonna see a preview of the bird or the logo or something like that. But if I don't have anything selected, here let's deselect. There we go, if I can click off of it. There we go, if I deselect an object uh, and just select a folder or something else, then it will say Adobe Muse Exchange. And now when I click on that, that will actually take me to the website that not only shows me uh, objects that I can download for the library, but it goes beyond that. These are all free things that you can add to Muse, including, in some cases, full-blown Muse templates that you can use, uh, galleries, uh, widgets, all kinds of things, because people are asking, hey, how do I add more widgets to the widget library? How do I get more things in there? Well, this is one of the ways, including a new uh, photography portfolio uh, by the Muse team. So for example, if I wanted that, I can click on it. Uh, I can read about what it is. If I like it, I can just say download, and guess what? It's mine. I can now use it. That template's been downloaded. If I double click on it, it opens that template up in Muse, and I can then begin populating it here. Let's zoom out a little bit, populating it with my content. So just that easily, I went and grabbed something from the Muse Exchange and I'm already in it and able to use it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that site because we're not going to use it. Uh, let's go ahead and jump back to our blank page here that we were on. And what we're gonna do now is use the other aspect of that hidden gem, which is the library to get started. So I'm gonna go to my library, Terry White. Uh, I have a, um, Let's see here, a find us box. Let's go ahead and drag that on. Now again, these were things that I added to the library. You won't have these things because you don't have a Terry White library. At least you don't have this one. And uh, so these are things I added previously. And you can add anything to your library just by selecting it and just saying, right clicking and saying add to library and then pick which library you, or folder you wanna put it in. So these are things I previously added. That's why you don't have them because they're in my library. Uh, so I pull this box out. The next thing I wanna do is pull out some buttons. So there is a location button that I can pull out, great. There is a uh, phone button that I can pull out, cool. And then there's a mail button that I can pull out. And as you can see, these are nice big round buttons for a mobile friendly layout. So these are, you know, fr finger friendly as I like to say. Now that I've got these, I'm gonna show you another quick hidden gem. We're gonna go ahead and select them. And we're gonna to go to the alignment panel, which again was added fairly recently. We're gonna say distribute those objects so they're evenly spaced apart and make sure they're aligned to the top. Okay, so now that I've done that, uh, I'm gonna put in a link that actually creates a dial. So when someone taps on that button on their phone, they'll actually dial a number. But I'm gonna put the number also below the button to show you the other hidden gem. So we're gonna get a couple bonus hidden gems out of this. So the first one, we're just gonna go ahead and grab a text frame. Now, of course, we don't need the number there. People can just tap and dial, but if you want it to display the number, uh, we can display the number as well. This has nothing to do with the button, but this is part of the hidden gem. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, uh, select that text, which is the number. And now in order to make that a link where people can tap it and dial it, we, can, we really want to do it on the button, but just to show you the, the uh, hidden gem here, we're going to go to our hyperlinks area, and we're just going to, here's the hyperlink we're going to type in. Instead of HTTP, which would go to a website, we actually want them to, or want to activate their phone to dial it. So that's a different hyperlink. That's T-E-L for telephone, colon, 
and then all you need is the number. So we're gonna put in the full number as if they were dialing it from any phone in the, in the world. So it'd be the plus sign for a US number, uh, one, two, four, eight, five, 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 one, two, one, two. So whatever the number would be, whatever the um, country code, whatever it would be, that's what you'd put in. So now here's the gym. And by the way, before we lose that, let's go ahead and do it on the, on the actual button too. So we select the button. Since we've already created that hyperlink, uh, we can just go ahead and use it in the recently used. We don't have to type it again. And now that will actually work for the button. So the text and the button are two separate things. They don't have anything to do with each other. But now that we've got that text, here's the other hidden gem. What if I don't like the blue underline? What if I want anything but a blue underline? A blue underline is so 1993. That's the way the web used to be. If I don't want that blue underline by default, what can I do about it? Here's the hidden gem. Under your file menu, here, let's move this over. Under your file menu, you've got something called site properties. These are the properties for the particular site you're working on. And there is a default link style. You can create new ones if you want. The default link style says, on the normal state, display a blue underline. That's what this underline T looks like. So if we said, no, we don't want a blue underline, we can turn that off, we click OK. That link would still work, but it doesn't have an underline under it. Still has the blue color. So how do we fix that? Again, we go back to our site properties. We go back to this and we can change this color to any color we want. So if we don't want that particular blue, maybe we want the lighter blue that's a little bit more subdued. We click that blue and then that will become the blue for our all of our hyperlinks that are based on text. Now when they hover over it, it will still have the blue underline because we didn't change anything. And when they actually click on it and it's been visited, it'll be purple. And when it's actually active going to the page, it'd be red. You can change any of these defaults, turn on, turn off, any check marks. So if you wanted it to be, um, you know, an italic T or italic text or regular text or underline, you can do any of these things. So we click OK. It gets our lighter blue color. If we were to preview this, even though we don't have rollovers on a phone, which actually we need to move that text box out a little bit bigger. Let's go ahead and do that so it's not so tight. There we go. Preview this. There we go. We roll over it. We get our blue underline. Even though on a phone you wouldn't have rollovers, but just to show you that that technique does work. Okay, so that's the first and second hidden gems. The first one was the library and exchange panel. The second one was the hyperlink changing the color. We threw in a telephone dial button kind of added hidden gem for those of you who didn't know how to dial numbers or set up Muse to dial numbers um, from your mobile layouts. Okay, so what's the next one? The next one, uh, we're gonna go to a page here, I believe. And on this particular page, if we, here, we're gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see it. We scroll all the way up to the top, starts off with a web page, and then it scrolls down and it does all kinds of cool scroll effects. But one of the hidden scroll effects that's, again, fairly new, is the ability to have the scrolling control a slideshow. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we're on the spot where we want the slideshow to appear. So we go to our widget library, widget library, we grab, uh, we can grab a blank slideshow, we can pull it out and we can turn off captions, turn off the counter, we don't need those things. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull it up here and then pull it, let's go ahead and drill down on it. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and spread it out there and we can pull it down as well. I want to make room or leave room for our buttons. So we'll put our buttons here. It's left navigation button and right navigation button. Move it up a little bit. Move that one up a little bit. There we go. And then we can pull this down a little bit more. Great. So now it's ready for our slides. So next thing we want to do is actually put our slides in it. And here we'll make it a little bit taller at the top there. And we're just gonna go ahead and grab the, uh, the little menu item here. We'll say add our images. Uh, it's gonna say add them from where. And we're gonna go ahead and go to our uh, Muse files here. And we'll go to this set of assets here. And I should have a whole bunch of tint images. Here they are. We're gonna grab 40 images to make up our slideshow. Go ahead and bring those in. 
And once those 40 images load, we're then going to have fun telling it how to play the slideshow. Okay, so our 40 images are in. We can get off the menu now. So the first thing we need to do is give this slideshow the same scroll effects as the frame around it. So we're going to go to our scroll effects. We're going to say that the it matches the motion of the other one. So I need to look at the other one to know what it is. So the other one is motion at 7360, 1000. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, 7360, 1000. Zero, zero, zero. So we do the same thing here, motion. 1x for the up, 0 and 0, and start our keyframe at 7360 so it matches the box around it. Okay, so now that we've got, we've matched the scroll motion on it, the next thing, and here's the hidden gem, is that there is a new slideshow control that's optional. So when we turn on the slideshow control, we can say that it just starts playing the slideshow when the person scrolls down to it, or we can say as they continue to scroll, we'll let it advance the slides. So that's the one I want to try. So let's go ahead and do that one. File, preview page and browser. It'll take a moment or two to build this page because it's got a lot of stuff on it. Uh, but it, once it generates the HTML, it'll open it up in my default browser as it has. And now I can start scrolling. We can see all the other cool things that were on that page using scroll effects. And uh, scroll effects now control things like opacity. And it can control like this ant moving around. This is actually an edge animation. So when we scroll down to it, it activated that animation. And now the ant's moving around. I'm still scrolling. We get down to our slideshow and our slideshow starts to advance. If I scroll back, it goes backwards. If I scroll down, it advances the slides. So pretty cool to be able to have someone scroll through your slideshow to advance the actual slides. All right, let's jump back to Muse. And the next thing we're going to do is actually, let's see, we did the library, we did the um, we did the phone number and the uh, hyperlink color. We did the scroll to advance the slideshow. So we got two more. The next one is, and again, I get this one all the time. Hey, can Muse do a blog? And the answer is no, but that doesn't mean you can't have a blog. So for example, on this site, uh, this site is actually a live site. It's at macgroup.org, M-A-C-G-R-O-U-P.org. And this site is one that I maintain, and it does have a blog, but of course, Muse didn't build a blog. The blog is a WordPress blog. But I wanted the blog to be a part of the site so that when people click on the navigation, they can get to the blog. So how do you do that? I'm gonna go ahead and add a blank page. Now, the page is gonna pick up whatever's on the master page, and I'm gonna call this page blog. But, of course, that's just a blank page. That's not the actual blog. So what I'm going to do is right click on this page and I'm going to say that in the menu options, here's, here's the hidden gem, that it's going to include the page without a hyperlink. Now it sounds weird, it sounds actually backwards, but that's what we want to do. We want to include the page without a hyperlink. So in other words, it's in the menu, but it doesn't actually go to this blank page. Let me show you. If we go to the master page now, because I added it into the site, that master page now has a, or has a menu item called blog because I added the blank page. But blog doesn't go anywhere now because I excluded it from the navigation. So what we do is we click on this navigation item, we drill down to it, and now we can give it the real hyperlink to where the blog really is. So it's at macgroup.org slash blog. That's where the real WordPress blog exists. So now to prove the point, let's go back to the site. Let's go to the home page. On the home page, uh, once it loads, we'll preview the page in browser. And that'll generate the HTML, show us the page, and there's blog with a link that actually takes us to the blog. And the blog has a link or links, the same menu items that take us back to the website. So we integrated a blog, even though Muse doesn't do blogging, it's not a contact management system, 
or content management system, I should say, but it does allow me to add external pages seamlessly in the menus, just as if they were part of the original Muse site by adding those blank pages, excluding them from the um, navigation and then adding the link back in. So that's how we do it. Last but not least, our fifth hidden gem or sixth or seventh, I can't remember. Uh, but the last one, let's head over to, let's see here. I think I wanna go to this one. Yep, this is the page I wanna go on. Okay, so there are these things around this page that are invisible once you're looking at the page online, but they're called anchors. So for example, we zoom in, there's an anchor called Top Global. We go over here to the left, there's a kayak top. So these anchors can be anywhere on the page. As a matter of fact, there's one called River Launch, there's one called Cove, and if we keep going, there's another one called Reef, so forth and so on. And what these anchors are designed to do is navigate around the page. So for example, if you click a link, it scrolls down to that spot on the page, or you click another link, it scrolls back up to that spot on the page. This is great for long pages. So even though this is um, not the hidden gem, but this is how you do it, you just click the link uh, button, you click where you want the link to be, or the, I'm sorry, anchor, where you want it to be. You give the anchor a name, such as top of page, and then that is, then you can hyperlink to that from anything else. All right, so that's how it works. That's how we create an anchor. Now, we've got one for this graphic. This graphic jumps back to the top of the page. And the way it works is it's been pinned to its location, which is a, another kind of hidden gem, pinning. So we pin this so it stays in this spot um, even as the page scrolls down. But here's the hidden gem. Let me show you the way it works now. We preview this page in browser. It'll take a second or two to generate it and then open it up in our browser. And there it is, top. So as I scroll, top stays in place because it's been pinned. Now, if I click top, scrolls us back up to the top. Great, works perfectly, except one thing. I don't want top to be there initially because we're already at the top of the page. There's no, no need to see that button. So here's another hidden gem. We're gonna go ahead and, uh, and select top. We're gonna go to the scroll effects panel, just where we were earlier. And we did the slideshow, but this time we're not doing a slideshow. We're doing the one to the left of it, which is opacity. Now we're gonna say, hey, I don't wanna see this button until you start scrolling down. So we're gonna turn on opacity, which the initial opacity is gonna be zero. Then it's gonna to go to 100% at 600 pixels down on the page. And then I want it to stay at 100%. In other words, don't ever go away, just stay there. So zero, 100, 100, and you can set those keyframes anywhere you want. And so now when we preview this page in browser, we should get nothing, meaning no top of page button because we're already at the top. And if we scroll down, we start to see the word top. There it is, it just appeared once we scroll down far enough and then it stays there till we, you know, till we need it. We scroll back up to the top, it disappears. So that's using another hidden gem, a couple of hidden gems. One is the pin. Uh, the other one is the, opa the new opacity controls for scrolling down pages. So if you don't want something to appear at all times, but you want it to appear as you scroll down further, you can have it appear such as a form or an ad or something like that, and then disappear if you want after they scroll past it or have it stay there as we did with the top button. So those are five or more hidden gems in Adobe um, Muse CC. Hope you enjoyed them and hope you learned something. We'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.